Hello everyone, my name is Brian. Uh, welcome you to the Concept Kickstarter podcast. And we have a special guest here today, my brother from my neighborhood, Kenya, next to Uganda. Uh, you welcome, my brother. And he's also from Dallas, Texas. Exactly, not so? Yes, yes. Living yes. in Dallas, Texas. Uh, and uh, you know, I have a great family there. And I've been with them for quite a number of years right now. And we are doing a lot of fantastic things together. And they were here at the Concept Kickstarter event. They just went back recently. And you two are here yes. with us. And welcome back again to Massachusetts. Thank I you. think there's something special about Massachusetts. Yeah. That, that's why you are back here. Something to do with the New England. <laughs> the weather stuff. So. It's the <laughs> way for, uh, for the Elix, <laughs> which is bringing you back here. What, what, what is bringing you back here? Um, I think the connections that we made from the Kickstarter. The, the connection you made from the Kickstarter. Right, and the opportunities that I think are there. Oh, yeah, and that, uh, the network, networking, in fact, as well. That's really good. Right. And people may be wondering, who are you? And uh, this is my brother, he's called David, and he can introduce himself more uh, as we move forward, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I didn't know I was going to do a <laughs> podcast, but it's, it's a conversation, right? So it's podcast a conversation. It's a conversation, just mm. be natural. So I'm, I'm back in my, uh, my name is David Owori, uh, originally from Kenya. I uh, live in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I came... Uh, How is the weather? Uh, weather right now actually is uh, it's warm. It's warm. It's very rain. It's raining <laughs> a lot over here. Here, here yeah. you see what the rain is doing to us. I'm telling you. Right. I feel like I, I should move. I've you think I should move? I, I think you should. You should have both. Both, both have sides, eh? Best of both worlds. Yes. <laughs> That's good. I would do that. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, the weather is nice over there. Uh, it's warmer. Mm. Not as like people tell me here in New England, it's supposed to be snowing, so the rain is substituting the snow right now. Mm. Yeah, but. Um, I'm a veteran. Nice. nice. Seven, 17 years in the uh, U.S. Navy. I work there. I have my own. I'll maybe I call myself an entrepreneur. Nice. I have two ventures that I'm working on. How was that. your experience serving in, in the U.S. Navy? Uh, it was actually good. I, I really had fun. Um, what is that one key lesson us, the outsiders, we can learn from you serving from the U.S. Uh, Navy, please? If, if I can sum it up in one word, it will be... Um, a global outlook like you, you you're doing things that are bigger than you mm, um, mm. Uh, looking looking at things from a bigger perspective like somebody might be a cook somebody might be a pilot but mm. every every person's job matters for the for the whole system no the whole system as such but for the whole goal of the navy oh, right okay, so okay. so that's so teamwork is really important in that aspect whereby like you know us in our society we try to say oh this person is not supporting me on this i don't think these people wish me well oh i don't support thing people like people always are like uh, we are always complaining right instead of figuring out how can we create a unit but like uh, that it put it aside as not the main point is that in the navy from what you have just shared what i'm saying is that there's a lot of unit like everyone's task is as important as the other person who is outside there doing another task. Correct. It might be you as a cook. It might be you uh, being on patrolling. It might be you. It is like an interconnection of a web. Like if this one loses a ball, the other system cannot work as efficient enough as it's supposed to work. Correct. Is that uh, what, what you're saying? That, yeah, that, that's, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, in fact, the, the naval aviation is what the part of the Navy that I, I worked in is a system. When you look, think, think of an aircraft, you think mm. of a system. Mm. There's hydraulic systems, mm. there's avionics, mm. there's tires. Without a tire, you cannot take off, mm. right? Without, avi without um, hydraulics, the, the flight controls cannot work. So it's all systems that work together for mm. the one main goal, which is flying. Mm. Same to the Navy to the one goal of uh, maritime security mm. and, 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 and securing the, uh, the oceans and, and all that. So everybody's job mm. matters mm. for the whole picture. So being part of that in my, uh, in my uh, career as a Navy uh, has taught me a lot to, mm. to, to how I apply things on the outside world. So it gives me a different perspective. Mm. Uh, say maybe somebody who is a civilian might, might not have seen these things the same way that I do. Oh, nice. Because uh, I was wondering, you as who served, uh, thank you for serving. Yeah, okay. I appreciate And uh, what now inspires you and you say, you know, I've served my country and now I want to venture into some other things. Like, you know, by that time you can say, let me just retire. I've done enough, 17 years of that run. But now you are you're making a decision and be like, okay, there are some other opportunities I can do. There are some other things which I can expand myself into. You know, always... As human beings, we are thinking, oh my God, I've done so much. 
if these people knew how much I've done. But the truth, there is so much into you which you can still give out to the world. Now, I know you have started a couple of two companies, uh, one mm -hmm. of the shipping company and the glass company. Yes. So t t t let us start with the shipping company. Tell us about that company. Um, the shipping company is uh, Shoppers Kenya Freight mm. and also shipping to East Africa. Mm. We move uh, our goods to, to East Africa, mainly um, Kenya, mm. Uganda, you know, eventually we're going to Tanzania and South Sudan. Um, that uh, started right after COVID and uh, we've really seen uh, tremendous growth to where there's demand. I think, I want to say for every three, for every four people from East Africa, three have ever maybe shipped before and they're mm. not satisfied or they're thinking of shipping mm. or uh, they've always gathering stuff to ship. So, so um, that ratio is, I think is like three to one. Mm. So the demand is there for people who want to ship. So reliable shippers, I think it's, uh, it's uh, people really look for people who can uh, get their, mm. their goods across the country to people in Africa. There's a lot of waste, you know, in the US being a capitalist country, there's a lot of things that people see like, hey, somebody just threw a TV. Mm. And you think of somebody back home without a TV. Without or used a TV. Garage, people, people have garages full of used clothes that kids don't wear no more, shoes, all that. No. We get kids and the kid grows so fast even before you, you, you give them the other right. clothes to wear. Yeah, there's a lot of waste yeah. over here. I remember growing up in Kenya, 70% mm. of what we wore were, were used stuff. You know, I don't know if it's the same for There's you. something in, in Uganda, Uganda yeah, yeah, I'm so telling you. Yeah. Maybe the stuff that People take them to goodwill. Mavumba. Mavumba, yeah. In Kenya, we call them Mtumba. <laughs> Mtumba. Now, it's, it's almost the same. You see the East African thing, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, use clothes, use shoes, uh, appliances, and all that. People always think of, you know, you, you, we, we are here as, you know, uh, foreigners and stuff, but we always have that attachment still. You have, your mind is still back home to people that you know that are poor, people are less fortunate, or maybe people that are doing business that they want products from here. So, there's a, a demand for that. So, I saw that opportunity as I... Or something you can right not only that it didn't even start like i was getting into mm. into shipping or anything i mm. i wanted to take some containers back home like hey why would i take an empty container Yo. so when i had a few stuff in there i'm like mm. hey i have all this space left so how can i talk to a few people why are you taking containers back home oh, wow. i wanted to this i wanted to maybe i was thinking of building modular homes it was just an oh, idea that i had right? i love that idea i've right. seen it uh, uh when I, that, that is that is really a good concept idea and i right. think you, you I saw one friend of mine in a place, there's a place in Uganda called Chigo, okay. uh, around uh, that area. Someone did it for Airbnb and right. it really came out so nicely. Right. And I've been thinking about it doing something like that, uh, like a resort with those major homes with using containers. Right. That's a good concept. Yes. I like it. So that's how, that's how the So you build them yourself or you are partnering with another thinking, person? I was thinking of doing that. Why don't you do it? Uh, maybe, maybe. We I have shared the, the, the secret to these people. They, 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 <laughs> you, you get a partner from someone who's going to listen and you can expand to it with right. them right. definitely right. so yes. are you only doing it like in kenya that's where you're thinking about doing it or you are thinking about anywhere the opportunity comes like in east africa you are willing to adjust and get a partner you never know someone right. who is listening here right. yes and may come back to the idea and work, right right this modular work, home work, that the, yeah we, we're, we're in the era of uh, information everybody can go online and look yeah. at shipping container homes there's mm -hmm. a lot of ideas free free information out there with, uh, with, the, with blueprints on how to build some of these things. It might yeah. be a resort, it might be a shop, it might be something like that. The good thing about modular homes is about uh, the sustainability, you know. You can build something that you can just move on the road and put somebody else. And to change. So that's something that I was thought of when I was stressed. And then when I put the few stuff that I had in the container, how the, all this other space left, I'm like, hey, what am I going to do with all this space? Mm, so when mm. I started talking to people back in Dallas, like, hey, do you know somebody who might want to ship something? I realized uh, there was a big need for that. So Someone who are shipping something, right? Like so people I'm brought taking in their back stuff. my bed. I'm taking back my couch. Right, I'm right. All this I've been thinking of sending this, so they brought it in. The container was full. I took it over there. Mm. Before you know it, we took another one and another one. I'm like, hey. So I'm you are licensed to do this business, right? There's not really a license required to do the business. You, you, of course, you have your company. Also for air, around. you don't. Uh, you do on a container, or you do also air. All right, you're introducing air as well. Okay. So we do containers, but uh, we this year we're going into uh, air freight as well. Okay. Right. And uh, how we quick is the turnaround on that? Uh, so about uh, without you no. Know, right now there's a there's a, a war going on in uh, in, in the, the the war in Gaza. Yeah. So with East Africa, you know, mm. the Suez Canal when it was mm. formed, the back the days for Anwar Sadat when they cut on the Suez Canal, he cut the transit time of maritime from mm. the Atlantic to the to to back in the Indian Ocean mm. through 
through Yemen, mm. the Gulf of Aden, Djibouti, back to South Africa, mm. but not South Africa, but uh, mm. to Kenya. Mm. But right now, uh, the Houthi rebels, they are capturing vessels over there. Mm. And they are making it uh, difficult. So vessels are really afraid of getting captured. So now they're looping around and mm. going through Mali, Senegal, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, South Africa Cape Verde, Mo uh, Mozambique, mm. climbing all the way. So it adds time. But before, uh, before there was that maritime risk, mm. the turnaround was about 47, 49 days mm. from port to port. We ship a lot from Houston. Mm. Every now and then we do uh, uh, Baltimore. Mm. But uh, port to port is about 45, anywhere from 45 to 50 days mm. for sale time. And then, of course, now you have to deal with uh, the, the unexpected process. situations. Correct. Yeah, definitely. Correct. Oh. So, uh, okay. You, you know, in our, uh, in our communities, we have a lot of shipping companies. Right. What, what I, uh, how have you seen this industry the way it's competitive? Because it's a, a little bit competitive in this industry. But what makes me make that choice of like, I want to work with Mr. David because that choice has to come at right. a certain time when right. you're shipping. Right. Uh, because shipping, it's uh, you're like, I'm entrusting you with the custard of my goods. Correct. And I'm entrusting you to say, you are the right person to ship my stuff. Because, Correct. and why even I want to share with our listeners why we're having this conversation because a lot of you guys ship stuff back home. And uh, those even who ship stuff to other countries, we're not only talking about East Africans, but how do you entrust the right person to ship for you your commodities? So if you can share with us what has been your experience to be that right person, someone makes a choice and say, this is the right company I should work with to transport my commodities. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good question, actually. When I was looking, because I've, sh I've been a customer before. I've had mm -hmm. my stuff shipped by other companies. And I've, I think when I started doing this uh, on a professional level, I realized uh, three things. Uh, people really care about cost. Mm. People really care the most about their stuff arriving safely. Mm. And uh, I was able to identify some gaps. Mm. Like you, of course, if you entering if you enter into a venture that has competition, you have to mm. study your competitor. Def definitely, you, you as a strength, mm. you, you, your strength becomes your model. Your, yeah, right. So when I looked at my competition, I realized um, mm. there's some things that uh, I could develop as my core competence yes and yes. one of them was a turnaround mm. so I, I you know competition is good because when me and somebody else in the same space we compete the winner is a client definitely right so one of the things that uh differentiates me as from 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 my competitor uh, some of our core competence is a turnaround mm. time mm. i've looked around across the board nobody beats me on the turnaround time beats mm. us on the turnaround time secondly is a mode of payment. Mm. You realize people, most of the people from our community, um, sometimes somebody wants they to ship something, they don't have the cash resources. flow. Exactly. Yeah. So if you give somebody a leeway mm. where, hey, I can ship the thing for you so long as it's paid before he arrives on the board. So you can play. Yeah. So, so the, the more, you know, so that, that way they have an incentive, not even an incentive as such. They say, hey, now I'm motivated to even ship mm. so long as I can make a, so, Second core competence is uh, a flexible p mode of payment, mm. and then the system. You know, we live in a world where people want things now, so we don't believe on getting called over and over. Where, where, where is my shipment? Can you update me? So we build. Uh, one of my very best friends uh, back in Kenya, Francis Onimbo, mm. uh, excellent. He's uh, very talented in what he did. He built a very good, robust system at the back end that updates wow, you wow. automatically. So you build your in a in-house system. Yeah, which you yeah. Use. Francis was able to build that for us, and yeah. um, that one is yeah. So that one, that way, people don't even have to call all the time, so they update it automatically. Every time, you know, you, you wonder ah, where is my stuff now? Right. How can I find out? Like the system always gives you those reminders. Right, and right, right. And the, and the third point, uh, the third core competence that I have is, I realize if you entrust me with your stuff to ship. Mm. And I entrust it with somebody else. Like if you ship with FedEx right now, mm. they won't give you UPS your stuff to deliver. No. So I've realized some of my competition, they um, they leverage somebody else's network to complete that one extra mile to get yeah. it delivered. So in our case, your cargo gets handled by us from end to end. Mm. If I come pick up your item from your doorstep, it gets delivered by the same people that work for the same company with the same professionality in your doorstep back in Kenya and Uganda. Uganda. So I eliminate the middleman, so that way you control the system from end to end, mm. and you can, th that way in, in the back end, you're able to 
You don't have now to explain to me, oh, we got to Uganda yes, and now we are and giving gave, you stuff gave, to DHL. And I gave it to D, uh, G4S yeah. and they hold this hostage because the, the, the load is not, yeah. is, not, is not full yet. No, we eliminate all that mm. by giving timely service end-to-end, door-to-door. Um, same company, same, same team handles your stuff from here up to there. That's, this is really wonderful. Right. Thank you so much for sharing that. And like, uh, guys, you hear it from him, Mr. David Dazzi has been helping people in our communities, has shipping, you know, trusting someone to ship your stuff is really so important, especially like for me, I ship a lot of building materials from here to back home. Okay. So it's really important for the turnaround, it's really important for the tax purposes, like how the, the goods get into the country, right. all that stuff, the logistics, because we don't know it. Right. You are just guessing, oh, how much they're going to charge me? But you, as an experienced person, you know, you tell me, when you ship your container, this is how much it's going to cost you, this is what is going to get there, this is how we're going to clear it, this is... I want something on my des on my doorstep. Right. I don't have to be chasing around systems back correct, to back correct. because I'm not an experienced logistics manager right. like you guys are right. uh, as you are. So choose someone you trust and they will deliver for you what you are transporting from A to B. Correct. That's the message for me I have with the people about your company. Correct. And then uh, as a great person, you have this company which is called uh, Glass. Car Glass. Car Glass. Correct. Car Glass. Tell me. Carglass. So, Carglass is an autoglass company. We repair and replace autoglass. So, this is what one of those things you call your baby. If, you know, you are, you are a serial yeah. Entrepreneur, yeah. entrepreneur, so you, you understand this. Yeah, I've had a couple of businesses. Grid, right? Yeah, yes. Right. So, I've done this since 2014. Why did we miss this Carglass? First a moment. I, uh, the Kickstarter, you didn't talk about the Carglass. This I, is one of the wonderful things you'd have shared with us. Right, right. I, I, yeah, so of course I had to stand there. <laughs> See, some, sometimes you don't know until you come. When I came in, I yeah. saw the opportunity and mm. I met with a lot of people. Mm. So now that, that's what I said on the next Kickstarter yeah. convention, which is next September? Yeah, no, no, we are doing it in April, right. 18, so, 19, 19. Yeah, Easter so, weekend always. Right, so we're going to yeah. sponsor both. Thank Shipi, you. The Thank shipping you. and the glass so people can at least we'll come and interact. love our sponsors. Thank right. you so much for always supporting us. We right. really appreciate that. So. Right, right. Because yeah. getting the information out, you know, and, you. And, and interacting with people, networking, that's how you, you, build, you build your network. And he's inviting you next year. Be there and come and meet him. But even before next year, we're going to put the contacts here. I want you to do business with the people you trust, the people. By the time I bring someone on my podcast, I've vetted them and I've interested them that they're doing a good job in so many ventures he's doing. Work with our people. Let us work within our community to expand our community. Yes, my mm -hmm. friend. Thank you. Yes, yes, that's true. So, uh, 14, uh, since 2014, I've done glass. Yeah. Right. And uh, I've done windshields, uh, dog glasses, sandals. Think of it like that. He has wheels and he has glass. We do it. Yeah. Ooh. Right. And um, my last employment, mm. I, I worked for Goldman Sachs. And... Um, I had somebody came from Kenya. First reverse. Right. First reverse. N yeah. Now this is taking me so fast. I want to... Uh, I think I skipped so much from your experience. <laughs> okay. So tell me. Uh, before, because now this brings me to the question, I think, really, which is important to these people. Okay. Because when someone sees you do, being investing in different opportunities and doing different businesses, right. they may not understand the background of it. Okay. They may not have the right venture of it, how it came about. So... Le let me rephrase back. You're in the Navy. You right. get out of the Navy. Give me that footstep. I think I got out oh, of the Navy. Oh, let us start from before you went into the Navy. Okay. Yeah. So we have to back, yeah. backtrack. Backtrack. Let us backtrack. All the way from when you came to this yes, country. Yes, please. Right? Yeah. Well, I came to the country as a student. Like Which year was that? Uh, it was 2000. Uh, oh, it's been so long, I, I forgot. It's 2000s, early 2000s. Uh, 2000s, yes, right, yes, right, yes. Right. So. I think the, the Who was the President Obama, Clinton? Or? I think it was George Bush. George Bush, oh, right, okay. Right. So I joined the military, um, I think, six years get into the country. Mm, right. Nice. Right. So uh, I think the, the entrepreneurial in me, it's always been there since I was in Kenya. Mm. I, I want to say that because I always wanted my own. I remember I have an uncle who mm. uh, worked for United Nations. And uh, back in the day, you know, they have dial up. Mm. You know, before you should go to the call call center, uh, not call, like a call, yeah. cyber cafe. I don't mm. know if you guys had those in, in Uganda. 
that's the only way you could pay 10 shillings yes to get surf the web and send emails and then play oh yeah we the used to have those cafes even right. i created one at one point right 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 so <laughs> i had i had an uncle jacob juang i can't remember he's i think he's one of the people that actually gave me a platform for a, for a global outlook i want to think but when mm. he did it didn't did he didn't do it intentionally it's something something organic that happened so he invited me one day and say hey uh, you you're my nephew hey, what are you doing tomorrow like come come see me at unep so I went over there. You know, United Nations organization mm. is it's hard to get in the security. Mm. Then I went and saw him at his uh, at his office, and he had a desk on the side that he didn't use much. And mm. say, hey, go over there and uh, play around the computer. So I don't know how in Uganda it was, but back in the day, once you got a hold of a computer with, with in internet, Kenya, the, no, even before the internet, the first yeah. thing you played was solitaire. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't. Uh, yes. So I yeah. played solitaire over yeah. and over. I'm like, hey, do you know that this this computer has internet? Like, mm. what is that? So I remember the first browser mm. that I used at your office was uh, Netscape. Mm. So he dialed up, he went to the world, and then I started exploring, you know. So I started going and looking at university because there was a gap where I had just finished high school. Mm. And there was that gap where you waited for the results to come out come to know on. which university is going to go. So mm. I had a lot of time in my hand. So I, always, I either went to church or I went to go do. So I went mm. there first. Mm. And then, so I explored, I looked at universities in Minnesota, you know, through the internet. Mm. I was able to look at other things in Canada and all that. Mm. So I, got, I became addicted to that. I'm like, next time I get a computer that has internet, yeah. I'm no longer playing solitaire anymore. I <laughs> want to go in there and start looking at stuff. <laughs> start looking for opportunities so to I, take it next. I got thing. used to that. Yeah. So I'm like, Uncle, when can I come next? So he invited me another time. Mm. Like, don't come every day because I don't want to get in trouble, but I <laughs> come have lunch. So I remember one time I went there and they had an uh, uh, international convention where people came from all over the world. Yeah. And uh, one of the subjects that I did in high school was drawing. Mm. And uh, I used to paint and draw a lot. It's a skill that I've lost. Mm. You know, I, maybe it's like riding a bike. They mm. say you can always go back to it. So when I went there and I saw all these foreigners, so I started interacting with them, just mingling. You know, you, mm. you, you're young, you're 16, yeah. 17. So I'm like, huh. So you think it's so important I thought, to the meet first thing strangers? That came to my head, yes, yes. So the first thing that came into my mind, I'm like, what can I sell these people? Mm. So when I yeah, went home, you are seizing an opportunity. Right, right. Yeah. You know? So because they were seeing, I saw people, I saw vendors mm. over there at UNEP. And mm. all they saw, sold was curios, you know, yeah. the African earrings and all that. And they were buying them. Yeah. They were buying them for like a thousand percent profit from what's being sold from on the street. On the streets. I'm like, how can I get a piece <laughs> of this? What, yeah. what, what do I need to do to sell some to of this? To tap into this network. I had some paintings that I had done at home mm -hmm. before. Mm. So the next time I was coming to UNEP to yeah. go see my uncle, I brought my paintings with me. And I told my uncle, hey, can you give me a booth over here? Yeah. So I can just show some of my paintings. Yeah. And I remember very well there was a, there was a delegation from Japan. Mm. I had painted one of these tigers yeah. with an open mouth and, you know, some fears. And he bought that and he paid me in dollars. Oh my. He blew my mind. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do this again. Yeah. So I checked on the calendar <laughs> and I saw how long the convention was. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. You went to the task of drawing. I drew day. another one. <laughs> yeah. You know? So instead of asking my dad for money, mm. I had my own money. Mm. to go mm. bus fare, to go explore, to after college, to go do my own thing. So, so you've developed your own resources, not waiting for your parents to correct. just fe chicken feed you correct. as anyone. Correct. Yeah. And sometimes I remember mm. my dad never used to see me for even a week because the time difference, right? Mm. He leaves in the morning for work and I'm, I'm gone early enough. Mm. But in the evening, I either go to UNEP, after that I go to college and then I go to church. Mm. You know? go to church we sing we interact with other youths and then by the time i come they're asleep so one day he came looking for me yeah because he hadn't seen me he was worried because you know yeah like, where's so the gentleman bed. hiding every right day. but then he, he mm. came to church and he was looking for me with my personal name mm. back home everybody in church was like i don't know who that is i'm like this is then somebody oh, they, oh you're yeah. talking about doc so yeah. i i had already acquired a nickname, a that, nickname. He, that he didn't know about <laughs> so he came there and uh, he found me i'm like i haven't seen you in a week i'm week. okay i'm like i'm okay yeah. like you haven't asked me for money i'm like i'm okay i have my own money right yeah. so i think that spirit that entrepreneurial spirit that hustling spirit i think mm. i brought it with me over here so fast forward years later when i when i came to the u.s yes. i remember very well uh we used to work so we could uh pay our own school fees mm. and all that. Never used to work for money from home. That, yeah. But on the weekends, mm. I did something different. I bought cell phone accessories. I don't mm. know, back in the day, they had flip phones, you know. Here in America? Uh, yes. Okay. They have those clips that you put on your, mm. 
on your pages? waist. Yes, yeah. pages. Yeah, they had pages. Yeah, pages you know? yeah. So all those things had accessories. They had mm. charges and stuff. Yeah. So we used to buy those charges for an access, cell phone accessories mm. for 15 cents and sell them for 1,200%, 1, mm. like 15, $20. 15, $20, right. yes. So other than going to church on Saturday, on Sunday, I spent the whole morning with one of my friends, Raf. Setting that. Set up table in a vendor in the flea market. Yeah. I buy accessories, I mark it up. So I, I had I had extra money to do other things. Yeah, yeah. So I think after joining the military, it's something that never died in me. So mm, after mm. coming in and, 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 and going through. But what led you to get inspired to go to the, to the, to the army? Uh, I think the inspiration came from a friend because mm. one, I saw the opportunity it can offer in terms of um, getting the school school paid for, mm -hmm. traveling the world, mm -hmm. doing something bigger than yourself, mm -hmm. you know. So I had a friend of mine that we went to, uh, we grew up together. Mm. It's called Peterson. So Peterson had joined, mm. and he told me about it. Mm. I'm like, huh, there's a program. You know, there's a big that was in Texas. In Texas. There's mm. a big misconception for the military. Mm. People that had never been exposed to military family members, mm. every, there's, there's, there's this uh, assumption that everybody's a rifleman. Everybody carries a gun. And that's the same mentality that I had. It's a mindset, right? Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to die. Yeah, I don't want to go. Right? Yeah, yeah. Only coming to realize yeah. carrying a weapon and fighting in infantry or being on the front lines mm. and stuff like that is only 1% of the jobs. There's other jobs. There's lawyers, doctors, pilots, all that. I never knew all that. So you only know what you know. You what you know. Right. So when Peterson told me, like, hey, there's a program that I joined. It's only two years. You mm. you test the, you know, you dip your toe in the water, see if you like it or not. If you don't like it, you can always come back. So I signed mm. up for that, National Call to Serve. So when I went in there, they gave me a list. So the first thing what you do when you join the military mm. is you take a test. Mm. Mm. When you take a test, based on how much you score, there's a such certain jobs that you qualified or not. Oh, oh. So if you score high enough, Hmm. They open the books and tell you this is all you qualify. But it's not what you want. It's the needs of the Navy. Navy. So this right now, the currently we're looking for people on these jobs. You know? But I saw some dollar signs. So instead of looking at the jobs first, I looked at the signs. Like, which one has a sign-on bonus? <laughs> like, then I saw $5,000. I'm like, give me that one. <laughs> so the one that I picked yeah. was an FMF Common. Yeah. FM FMF what Common. What is that in for? Fleet Marine Force. Oh. So pretty much you are a doctor for the Marines uh -huh. in the front line. In the front line. So I was motivated by the dollar signs over oh there. Oh my I'm God. I'm like, give me this one. So that's what I signed up for. Yeah. So when I went to Bukham in Great Lakes, yeah. now you're training, you be, you're being taught in depth that the job that you're going to be doing, this is what you're going to be your title. They told you, you are pretty much a Marine in a Navy uniform. Mind you, I get oozy when I see blood. Okay, so when I see blood, I also faint. Yeah. I feel like fainting. Oh, <laughs> how are you? So when people, so people told me what I was going to be doing, uh, <laughs> I'm like, front line is what I did not want. Yeah. Why well, are yeah, you taking me now front line? Yeah. Like, you chose this. So yeah. in the military, there's something they call, you choose your rate, choose your fate. The job is pretty much called a rate. Yeah. Your rating is you have to be aviation, yeah. you can be a cook, you can be an IT. So I chose the rate of medical. Yeah. But the type of medical was pretty much working with the Marines. Yes. And I remember very well sitting there and thinking, man, this is exactly what I want to do. They already paid me part of the 5000 because they pay you a little bit. Yeah. And then once you finish boot camp, remember, you have to pass and prove that you can yeah. fin finish basic training before you go to get trained for what you're yeah. doing. And that money cannot be given back. Yeah. And they said over and over, choose your rate, choose your fate, choose your rate, choose your fate. So that kept on right. But I'm like, there's a way I can change this. So. You are there talking to other people who have chosen good rates. They're going to be traveling the world. They're never even going to see the ocean. I'm like, I want that. No, but you chose this. When you raise your hand and you say, I'm going to serve and this is what I'm going to do, that's what you're supposed to do. But I remember very well, I, um, I was sitting there that night. I was thinking, man, there has to be a way. Yes. So when you go in to resign mm. your job saying you understand this is what you signed up for, this you're going to be doing, I talked to the recruiter there. Yeah. And I told him, I gotta be honest with you. I cannot stand the sight of blood. Yeah. I cannot be an FMA woman. But why did you pick the rate? And I'll be honest, man, I got motivated by the money. Yeah. That's all that money could do for me. Yeah. Five thousand dollars. <laughs> I've never seen, you know, I did I've never seen it. <laughs> but then something happened. And he told me, David, you know what? Thank you for being honest. I'm gonna lock you in this room over here. I'm gonna give you a book. This book is gonna show what the Navy needs right now. 
I give you five minutes. Whatever you choose right now is what you're going to be. Don't even worry about that. The sign-on bonus. And I had already talked to people. Yeah. And I knew I wanted to be aviation. I didn't even look for I looked yeah. at aviation rates, whatever was open, I said, give me that. Yeah. <laughs> Long story short, that's what I ended up being. Yeah. Uh, I changed my rates, which something people told me could not What happened done. to your bonus? I, I kept it. Oh, nice. And still changed the rate. Nice. Which is, I don't know how that happened, but I think God's <laughs> grace, I kept that. I went to California. Yeah. I did that. I went on an aircraft carrier. Yeah. One of the best and hardest things I've ever done. They say being on an aircraft carrier is one of the second most dangerous jobs in the world, second to deep how? sea. Deep Share sea. with me. See, I was working on a flight deck. Mm. And on a flight deck... If you can, a misstep can cost you your life because you have jets blowing. Because I was what's called a, a plane captain for F-18 fighter jets. Mm. So these F-18s, they have drop tanks. They have uh, ordnance. Ordnance is what we call weapons on them, on the, on the, on the, on the pylons. On the, pilot, on the side, yeah. they have rockets. They have 500-pound uh, bombs on mm. them. And then you have to chase it around to the top of the flight deck. Pretty much an aircraft carrier is... Um, it's a moving aircraft. Mm. See, the Navy, part of one of the missions of the Navy is to, uh, to do the maritime security. So seven days, a, seven days a week, seven days a week, 356 days a year, mm. they patrol every single ocean on behalf of the whole world. So there's rotations, right? So there's anything, any wild event that happens, they're always there quickly because they got sent over. So you have to patrol. So I remember back where the first, the first two I did was patrolling the Pacific Ocean. Mm. And on top of the aircraft carrier, the aircrafts launch all the time. And if you misstep and do three steps back, you can be hit by a catapult and you have a jet engine blowing hot air on you. And there's nowhere to go because over there is like yeah. 19 feet on the air. You can drop in the ocean. So it was very challenging. So you taught you he taught me something. You, we were taught Be a lot. attention to detail. That's one thing the Navy yeah. ever taught, attention to detail. Because back in, um, in the basic training, we folded things that we did when I was a kid, folded a shirt the right way. So because they're preparing you for the fleet, mm. they're preparing you for something bigger than you. Mm. Because you're dealing with $60 million aircraft. You know, you're dealing with people's lives. Yes. So you need each other over there. So you always had your head on the swivel. So it's a web which has so to connect. So it was a very difficult job, but it was very rewarding at the same time. Because mm. on the on, you know, in the navy, if you're underway on a on a ship, it's called a boat. Mm. So they say we're on the boat. Every day is Monday. Oh, you, you never know what day it is. I have a friend of mine also who who worked for the navy. Right. Uh, uh, we started together in in uh, high school in Uganda. Right. He's back here. He was he used to live in Virginia, but now he's back to Massachusetts. Right. Yeah. So every day is Monday, yeah. you wake up in the morning, you do the same routine over and over and over again so you can be called in. No, you never know when what you're doing is a drill, which mm. is the practice of the real thing. Because you've practiced so much, it becomes natural. Right. You feel like you're connected to the system. And right, you know the right. right steps to make. So as you're in the Navy, uh, let us jump back to the other career building. You finished the Navy. Uh, that, is that when you joined the bank? When did you work for... So I was in California for, mm. uh, for, for my first tour. Mm. And uh, I retoured again in California. Mm. And then I came back reserve back in Texas. Mm. So when I came back in Texas, now I had more time because now I was re naval reserve. Mm. So I was strictly in aviation. Mm. I, I wasn't going on the, on the, on the ocean, the ocean or anything. On the ocean, we had a good time. You know, we went to Hong Kong, yeah. Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore. Mm. We, we had fun. Do they allow you to get off on the boat and yes, go do yes, yes. your other stuff? We, this is called port, uh, port calls, yes. Oh. Yeah. Imagine for three months, sometimes two months, all you see is the sky and the ocean. And then now all of a sudden they announce tomorrow morning, because you never know where you are, right? Yeah. They announce tomorrow morning you're going to be pulling into Hong Kong. And then you wake up in the morning just to see land. There's a big connection that people have with the natural. You know, I've seen, you've seen this, the movie yeah. with Sandra Bullock when he went, yeah. went to the space. When he came back, he just felt like eating the sun. It's the same connection. That's why you see most movies that you, they portray the sailors, mm. they always drink like crazy on the port. So people mm. that drink, for three months you've never drunk, so all you're craving is one beer. And then one beer becomes five beers. Five beer, it becomes it beer. Become an international event. So that happens a lot. Yeah. Right. So, yes, there's what call a pot. This is a good experience you're sharing pot with oh, us, yes. I'm telling you. There's yeah. what's called a pot call. So when a pot call is aircraft carrier, by the time you get there, every, everything is already ready. The, mm. the, 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 the host country already know you're coming. Mm. They clear stuff for you. The ship pulls. You know, 
aircraft carrier carries an average of five to six thousand sailors in a Right. So, so you have to clear custom already or they have they, that's all done through the Pentagon and all that. So when you come there, you know, the next five days you're in Hong yeah. Kong. So they teach you the etiquette for that country. This is mm -hmm. what you do. Because remember, you're representing something bigger than you. Oh, okay, you can okay. go there and mess up mm. and they won't say Brian messed up. They, they say, say US, the US Navy, Navy messed, messed, messed up. up. Right. So there's a body system that's mm. enforced there. Mm. So you have to go out with somebody else. There's accountability mm. where you go out with somebody else. You, you, you're accountable for each other. You make sure... You, you treat your host well, mm. right? And uh, yeah, so we do port calls. So all I, I, I had fun because I looked up that can they teach you where to go, where mm. not to go, what places are out of bounds, what time to come in, you know? Mm. So they give you all that when you pull in. Yeah, so we did that for all the Yeah, it allow you to stay overnight or you come back like It depends on what rank you are. Okay. Yeah, you know, the, hey, young, the younger age. people are, the more they mess up. So if you're mature enough, like the officers, you can stay yeah. overnight. But yes, but if you pull, in the, if you pull into the, some of the... Like in Thailand, I remember that's the first port that we pulled into that we stayed even in out in hotels and stuff, and yeah. it was it was it was it was very good. Uh -huh. Same same to Singapore, same to um, Philippines, Malaysia, Australia. It was it was it was quite an experience. So when I came back, I came to Texas. Mm. So when I came to Texas, now I was in the reserve, so I w I didn't have to do this full time. Full time, yeah. So that's where I now I picked up from where I left off mm. and finished my um, my associate degree mm. and. See now benefits of being in the military, mm. they pay for you a school. I finished my graduate, my undergraduate graduate. degree, mm. and then I got hired on by Goldman Sachs. I uh, know by JP Morgan, JP, JP Morgan, yeah. right? So I worked for JP Morgan, I was doing hedge funds mm. for, for quite a while. Then, I how had was your experience with the hedge funds? Hedge yeah, funds was, was, yeah, people, people lose, you move millions and billions you know people money know, moves people like say, quick uh, yes it's, yes it's a good just uh, thing to share with people like money is just numbers right people think about a million and think about is a liquid cash no, you call. no 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 it's, just it's a digits. number it's which a number is, yeah. I, I used to i remember sometimes i used to wake up in the morning and somebody because a lot of hedge funds they they, they, they like to structure their companies in their offshores like mm. the cayman islands the barbados mm. all this uh Luxembourg and all mm. that so you wake up in the morning and then a client says hey can you wire two billion to this fund or, yes or you know they you know so it's, it's all moving so the, the hedge fund managers, they manage their funds. So mm. they are, and then the Goldman Sachs, uh, um, JP Morgan is the was a custody for them. Was yeah, a custody, custody yeah. through, through mm. the financial. Mm. There's a custody. I have to hold this money somewhere mm. for transparency. And then you tell me where you want you to move it, and then I charge you performance fee. Mm. That's that's what we that's did. What you used it to so you saw people lose billions and make billions at the same time. So we moved a lot of money. It's all numbers. You wake up in the morning, you press a button. It's Money goes three billion and just move from this account to the other. The other, one, you know, <laughs> yeah, and then you keep up with the performance fees. You keep up with the uh, with the with the uh, with the capital calls and the contracts between lawyers and stuff. So mm. we, we pushed a lot of paper over there, but you were still the attention to detail that we were taught in the military came over there. So this thinking of uh, how we see it, Cedar Street, Brock Rock, and uh, Vanguard is really right. They control right. the system, the money system. Right, right. They are one of the big Brock Rock. I think there's one in Connecticut down here yeah. too. I forgot what his name, but here in, in Massachusetts we have State Street. You yes, see, State Street, yes. The, how much they control? Five trillion dollars. Yes, that's a lot of money. And that's and that's just a hedge fund, but yes. also there is a, uh, yeah, like Bain Capital yes. is one of them. You know, the the, the private equity firms. Mm. We work with them a lot. So after that, um, I missed California a little bit. Yeah, and, and you I, said, let me I, go back to yeah, California. Yeah, and I have an opportunity to go work <laughs> for Google. Yeah. So <laughs> I went back to Google. Oh, nice. And I, what was your position in Google? I, I was working on a project that was going to be launched 10 years down the line. Oh, my God. So, they are planning. And so, for us, when we are planning for our companies, mm -hmm. we should think about, like, what is in the next 10 years? Not planning about, like, you know, that, that is a good point to talk about. I want you to go in depth about that. Because in so many cases, me even also personally, when I'm operating my company, I'm like, how am I surviving today? Right. How am I able to do the next thing tomorrow? Correct. But... Then, as you keep on learning and doing better and improving on your skills, you start realizing, like, okay, how can I project this company to live for generations and generations? And you remember the Kickstarter, one of the interviews which I did, I asked someone, okay, why do you think Indians have been able to build generational businesses? That question, yes. And that was really a key important aspect of them telling me that the way they have realized that 
the mode of them working togetherness mm -hmm. as a family mm -hmm. and the mode of them understanding that mm -hmm. it starts from a small concept to right. a bigger concept. Right. They start with a small shop here mm -hmm. doing grocery. Right. They open up a laundromat, mm -hmm. the brother. A uh, sister opens up a restaurant. By the time they realize in 10 year period, they own the entire block. Right. Now the next year, by the time they come, they right. just understand the system right. how it works. Right, right. So but they, you they, share with they, me about they, that. They start, with the, beginning, they yeah. start with the beginning and, and end. So and they have a roadmap on where they're going. Yes. So it makes it easy if somebody's mm. if you're not paving that way for yourself because the system already proven for them yeah it really works you know you do the, the project job the, the, the project the project i was doing in uh, in uh, in uh, google in google mm. it was actually very strange because back then is when i started seeing the robo the the the, the, the prius with the with the, yeah. with, the, with the with the cameras on top yeah you know, some some things you have to sign a lot of non-disclosure agreement to see mm. hey this is what you can talk about because some of these things are secret it's the yeah. projects it's some, some of them are just R&D. Mm. They don't know it's going to be feasible enough, but they're in the testing mode. Mm. So I remember what we were working on was to, the way people could shop inside a building without going to the building. Hey. And you can think of, this was 13 years ago. So you can go to like Home Depot and you zoom in the way you do Google Zoom mm. and you go past the roof and you go to the aisles and pick stuff from the aisles and put it in your shopping cart and get delivered. Is this the s almost the same technology which Amazon is using in uh, Whole Foods, in some of Whole Foods? Yeah, yeah my, so the Instacart and all that. Yeah. The, the, it's, it's all born because you know, these tech companies, they competed. And this was 10 years ago, <laughs> you know? Oh, my Two, God. 13 years ago, I think. So I worked for that for a little bit mm. until I realized when you're getting paid, all the money went to the living costs. I'm like, I miss Texas. Uh, uh, I, I went back to Dallas so fast. <laughs> Yes. I'm like, I thought you left. Uh, yes. And I'm like, yeah, I've, I've, I've gone to different... Right. First, take a pause there. Right. You know, it's a challenging for people to understand that it is okay to transit at right. one point of time. Right. Always. Right. It's not a must that if something is not working out here, that you should stuck there. No. I want people to understand. People are always thinking about, oh, ah, how would people judge me? Don't think about the individual right. judging people, people, people you. Think about failing. you challenging yourself to right. be better. Right. If here it's not working out, right. it's time to move. Right. If it's something you want to just do better somewhere, mm. move. Yes, I think uh, w uh, to 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 attest to what you're saying mm. is is uh, knowing when to move on. That's that timing. That, yeah. Know, knowing when to quit something mm. that's not working mm. is, is a mm. challenge for most people because it, I think it's, a, it's an African thing. We are taught mm. like you're gonna be seen as a failure. Mm. So eighty percent of things you do is not for you but mm. for uh, the way other people think of you think of you and sometimes it's very ironic because you find that people don't even you know you know even in their mind to think they think like that uh -huh. that's a perception you have uh -huh. so you stick to something that doesn't work for so long mm. not knowing that hey this is this is i'm going the wrong direction here mm. yes but pick back i came back to texas because mm. i knew that was no work for me yeah i finished my uh and then i started on my uh, master's degree oh and then I met my wife. What is inspiring you from studying? You know, studying is not easy. I'll tell you. I think like, you know, if, if if I knew studying is not easy, actually, if, especially yeah. for masters. When I did yeah. my uh, graduate, I think if I had to do it again, I would not have done it. Can I ask you a question? Right. You think getting a degree is important as learning a skill? No, I think getting a skill mm. is more important than getting a degree. Because right now with the IT, you know, there's a lot of disruptive technology that have come up mm. that have changed the mode of operation people used to think of. Mm. Because before COVID, nobody, used, people never used to think the world could, people just could work from home and things. The still AI, the, the jobs which are yeah, going yeah, 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 AI. I've a seen thing. like a McDonald's, which right, are Starbucks, right, which are right. like all these companies, so like they're right. cutting cost, cost, cost management. Right. So you either have to be, you go with the with the with the you know, technology and the mm. movement, or you get left behind. So uh, education is good to open your mind and all that, but why? Why, why are you getting a degree? Mm. It's very as important as not getting one because I think I got the degree because it was going to look good, like, hey, have a master's degree. Why? Yes. Because I was motivated, like, hey, some positions I was looking at. Remember, at this point, I know I have that entrepreneurial mind. In, in, but in also you are still thinking that am, you can work you for are someone. And, and I'm already working for someone. Yeah. I'm already working for Goldman Sachs, uh, yeah. for JP Morgan. JP Morgan. Then when I got my graduate degree, that's when I moved to Goldman Sachs. And I started mm. working Goldman Sachs. And I was already married by then. I met my wife, mm. you know, beautiful wife, Juliana, nice. back in, when I was through the Navy, yes. you know. We, 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 we you have kids? Yeah, I have two kids. How many kids? Uh, as a 10-year-old, oh. Olivia, nice. and a 7-year-old, Emmanuel. Oh, my God. My, my daughter, she's called Olivia, too. Oh, really? So oh, yeah. There's, there's some, nice. synergies, some synergies <laughs> over there already. Definitely. Yeah, right. So, um, 
And that's when I joined Goldman Sachs. Mm. You know, I was what they call uh, experience hire because Goldman Sachs, you know, they nurture their the employees from the get go. They go to the best UTs, and uh, you know, everybody wants to work for Goldman Sachs. Mm. You know? So they they get them from level zero to analyst one, analyst two, associates, VP, all. Of, so they nurture them. What is that principle you learn from Goldman Sachs working there? <sighs> I think products. Okay. What is that in depth? Goldman Sachs, as opposed to J.P. Morgan. Mm was 90% technology, even though it's an investment bank. It's the best investment bank in the world, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But it's 90% technology, mm. right? So everybody wants to get in so much mm. that they weed out and everybody's Easy. always knocking on the door. I remember a lot of people used to tell So you me, hear, they, 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 like, it's a company where by every day they are hearing a lot of noise. Get me in, get me in. Right. But it's not just a way to get you in. No. You have to have a unique right. skill right. to get and you in. And until you're inside, mm. That's when you, you realize. Know. I remember, in fact, <laughs> we, 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 were in the, we were in the division of Goldman Sachs, which they call uh, operations. We mm -hmm. don't make any money, right? So we just ops. The people that made money is the people in Salt Lake City, the people in, yeah. in, in, um, in, in New York, yeah. right? They're the ones that make deals. You know, yeah. so a company is going, uh, is going live. You know, it's going now. They have an IP launch, and then Goldman Sachs yeah. is the one taking them there. They have two, three, 60, 40 yeah. billion dollars. You know, Walmart wants to construct... Uh, wants to construct a, a Walmart over here in, yeah. in, 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 in Cambridge, right? Yeah, Cambridge. They, they don't use their money. Yeah. They use leverage, right? Oh. They take money from... They are share stocks. Right. They, yeah. they come, they say, hey, I have a project. The project is called Walmart or Target, whatever company is a $3 billion project. Put How it can out I there. leverage my yes. valuation? Right. Yeah. And then they put it out there and then companies say, hey, institutional investors like the Massachusetts Police Department, they invest in that, they say, hey, give me mm. $2 billion of that. And then they do a capital call and they put it together and then they mm. take Walmart, hey, do you remember the $3 billion you wanted? Mm. Here it is over here. You know, and then they pay an interest on it. That interest, but they, they write it off, that interest. Mm. You know, so instead of using their own cash flow, they use leverage. Because They're they using other people's money. And then now, the institutional investors like the Massachusetts PD and all mm. these other uh, hedge, hedge funds, mm. they invest on, on syndicated loans as well. Mm. They take that money and they make an interest that Walmart is going to pay. Mm, mm. You know? Mm. So that's how they grow these 401ks. That's how oh. they grow these mutual funds, you know? That's how they grow because of the interest being paid by Walmart. And then Walmart mm. takes that interest and just write it off. Okay. So they keep their core. The computer. system keeps on feeding each other, right. feeding each other. Right. Let, let me tell you, with your experience of in, uh, in investment in, in stocks, before we go back to the department which you're working on, right. what is that? of the things you can share with people in our communities. Because our community look at the stock market. I'm going to lose money. That is the, oh, the first thing. Like, if you tell my father about investing in stocks, mm -hmm. he will tell you, I can build a building in Uganda. I can buy property in America. Mm -hmm. that, that is what first gets to his right. mindset. Right. He, he want, he, he's scared. Right. He, 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 he is like, I don't want to take that risk which I don't understand. Correct. What, a person like that, what is the simplest way you can articulate to them that there's also an opportunity there, but this is how you can safeguard your opportunity? Well, uh, there's always risk in anything, yeah. even taking a degree, right? Yeah. Because people, people are used to what is comfortable and what is, is certain, right? Mm -hmm. Investing in stocks. And let me first give you an India on this. Uh, please, this is just for educational purposes. And it, you cannot use it for your investment decision making. Thank right. you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for saying yeah. That disclaimer is very important yeah. because it gets. Through. So yeah. um, everything has a risk. Yeah. Right. So the best thing I will say for uh, your dad or somebody else that's thinking the same is you have a man or just shadow somebody who's doing it already. You know, have somebody who has an example or mm. start small. Mm. You know. You, very many people get left behind or, or miss the train. They just hear about, hey, this talk does well. This like everything else, you have to educate yourself through it. Mm. There's nobody guarantees you if you go get a degree or take yourself to school, you're going to get a good job, mm. right? Or you're going you're gonna to get hired somewhere. But it's a risk you're taking. Mm. But you're taking this risk because you've seen other people taking the same risk. Mm. Same with investment in stock securities and all this. Mm. People have taken risks and succeeded. Mm. People have taken risks and failed. Mm. But the failure part is normally so much blown out that people forget the other side of the coin that you can actually make it. Mm. So your dad staying away out of fear 
I think is a good thing than getting in without the education part, without knowing what you're doing. So my dad has to be an educated investor. You don't have to be. Right than now, just ba I back mean. in the day, not back in the day, like re until recently, retail investors is a, is a, is a big thing now. Mm. You know, people like platforms like Robinhood and all this. Like you can open an account and only trade for five dollars. Mm. Once you see you multiply your five dollars to ten, all you have to do is duplicate that. Mm. But having the basic knowledge of investment and what is a stock, mm. that's what I'm saying. There's that's no, where it there, there is from. no age like this age because yeah. it's the age of information. All this information is free online. You that's go to right. fin finviz.com. I'm, I'm not. Finviz are not paying me for this. <laughs> you go to YouTube and just Google basic, basic information, basic information about trading. trading. What is trading? What's a stock? Mm. How can I read the price index of Once a stock? Once you have How? education on your mind, now mm. you're making educated decision, other than just doing it because a family member. And oh, then now that's what you know. We, we, uh, you, during COVID time, people used to have a conversation. Oh, have you seen Apple has exactly. this gone up? Have you seen? Right. Then someone swaps in. I'll tell you, <laughs> I would not even name the company. Right. Uh, I am an educated investor. Right. But at one point, I had this same thing which happens to people. Right listening to too much noise in your ear right. and you don't take the moment to right. rethink about it right, right. i made a, an investment mm -hmm. which i lost so much money right. and i was like wow never lose your guts about how it's supposed to be done correct he has shared that with us like be an educated investor learn before you invest before you make a decision educate yourself have a proper understanding of something which you are investing in it and that's how you can be able to mitigate your risk in any investment. Yeah, not, not, not only that, yeah. but also you can give somebody else the risk, somebody yes. else who's learned that. And Who? you, pay, you pay them performance fee. Wow. You know, so you say, hey, this is my money, manage yeah. it for me. Right now with the AI and all that, mm. there's other portfolios that it's called an intelligent portfolio where mm. it takes the money for you and it invests it for you. Mm. You know, that's why you've been in... Which system is that? Uh, any, any brokerage account has oh. it. Oh, okay. You know, with the retail investor, anybody, even with five dollars now, you can open a brokerage account. Nice, nice, right? Because I think in most of our which uh, 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 th th that is another time we'll ask about yes. that. Yeah, yes, in most of our communities, mm. African communities, like I was saying when mm. during the Kickstarter, financial education is not something we were taught. Is it, you, you see what we are discussing right. here? I want to first even take this opportunity to thank you, my brother, mm. that. You have taken even the initiative of sharing your story. You have taken the initiative even of sharing your experience with us. Because there are so many people in our communities who have a lifetime mission to share this. But they have not taken the advantage of doing right, that. Right. And I call upon all of you. Come and have a discussion. Come and share with us. And we'll change the next generation. We'll change the future of our great, great, great grandkids. Mm -hmm. So I ask you as my brother is doing it here today. And when I come to Dallas, we'll do another one again, and we meet also that community. Right. So it is really important that our people should start understanding that there's every bit of an experience or something you know you can share with other people to learn and do something better. We learn to do something better so that we avoid mistakes in the future. And I'll tell you, like for us, I remember when we started a business, we didn't have a money of it. You just start the company, you're like, okay, I'll survive. You figure out how am I even paying employees? How am I doing this? Like everything, you are just what you've been there. You, you figuring you, it as out as you go. As you but go, but then you see, you find, mm. you find in that case mm. for an entrepreneur, what gets you the drive going is a vision because yeah. you started at the beginning of the end. The passion, right? The tenacity. Yeah. The drive. Yeah. That's when you watch companies like Shark Tank and all that. Mm. Whenever they, whenever these investors invest in in in, in these ideas. 80% of the investment is in the person. They see the yeah. passion. They see the drive. It's like this is the kind of person, like if, if stuff hits the fan and doesn't go well, yeah. they're going to be keeping at it because they are passionate about it. They are going to keep the driver moving. Right. And the other thing to, to, to the point which I was sharing also is that as you're learning, learning because you didn't have a proper manual, you may make mistakes, but those mistakes can be improved now. We help our community to improve the mistake. Like I'll tell you, today, Someone may be thinking about entering the Navy, but they didn't know the depth exactly. of it. Exactly. Someone may be thinking about joining Golden Star, and he's asking himself, why am I knocking the door and it's not being opened? Right. We have answered their question. Right. Someone may be thinking about starting a shipping company. Mm -hmm. Now they know, I can call my brother Davis, mm -hmm. and it, it tells me about how I can start the process. Okay. And that's why we are here for us. 
non selfish enough to share the knowledge which we have learned. But as we are, we are finishing up, I want you to tell us about this. Uh, okay, last so first campaign. of all, I think we yeah. backtracked a little yeah. bit. We went over there, Carlos. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine came yeah. from Kenya. Yeah. His brother told me, "Hey, I want, I want uh, my brother just from from Kenya. He's mm. tired of staying at home. You know, mm. he's still you know while we go to work, he's bored. Yeah. Do you have something to do?" I remember back then I bought a vehicle that I wanted to ship to Kenya. It had, mm. a, it had a cracked glass. Mm. And uh, I took it to a body shop. And when the body shop, it, there's something about glass that you have tons and tons of buildings, right? Yes. People can tear down, demolish a building, build it. Mm. You know, they can do renovation. They can, you know, they can rehab a yeah. house. But when it comes to glass, they call a, call a glass guy. Yeah. There's something phobia about glass. Glass. Right? That's true. Even in a dealership, Mercedes-Benz mm. dealership is right here. Yeah. They'll work on the engine, transmission, everything. But when it comes to glass, they'll call a glass guy. So this phobia of glass mm. creates an opportunity for people who are glass technicians for yes. like us to mm. come and harness that opportunity. So when this vehicle... I had a broken glass. Mm. And I remember I was still in Goldman Sachs there. Yeah. And uh, the body shop, di the, the body guy did everything he's supposed to do. Mm. He, he, re he replaced the, 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 the transmission, he did the body, did mm. everything. But when he came for glass, he had to leverage that and call a glass guy to a come. A glass, glass company to come on here. But that glass guy did his job and he wanted his money right on the spot. <laughs> So they call me out. Catch me on the spot. <laughs> right. So I was, I mean, I'm, I'm working yeah. and I'm getting a call like, hey, this guy needs his money. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, back then, it's 2014. Yeah. We didn't have cash up. We didn't have Zelle. Yeah. We didn't have this mo frictionless mo modes of payment. The mm. only PayPal, I think, was existing. Mm. But this guy wanted hard cash. Mm. So I found it for preposterous that they had to call me out. I had to take a break, take my lunch, lunch break, break and just to go drive. pay him. Go but pay I'm him. glad that I did that. Yes. Because... That's how the seed got planted. Into you. Too. That's how I started glass. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I paid him, he gave me a business card. Mm. The following day, I went to McDonald's and I found him there. And I'm like, hey, Cuban, do you, do you remember me? Uh, but but you see the, the coincidence of this. That God sometimes brings also the connection to us. Uh, about all the... the Places of Dunkin' Donuts, you went to that one. Right, McDonald's. Uh, that McDonald's. And imagine, I met the yeah. same person who fixed the glasses. Uh, uh, who, who did the, the glasses? Right, right. right. Yeah. So when I, when, I, when I met him, I said, Hey, do you remember me? You did the glass? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, the Jeep. I don't remember yeah. I did the Jeep for you. Like, yeah. Oh, but you know what? I lost your business card. You, I might need you again. Hmm. Can you give me another one? Then he gave me another one. Hmm. That day when I was driving home, I realized I started noticing hmm. glass companies on the road and they're all speeding. Hmm. So I started asking myself, Why? And coincidentally, the previous day, mm. my friend Bernard had asked me, do you have something his brother can do? You know what I'm saying? Huh? Let me look into this glass thing. So I went home and I looked yeah. at the glass. I realized... Made more well, research and... Did right. Mm. Then I picked up the business card. I'm like, hey, Cuban, remember you told me about glass? Can I meet up with you? Mm. I'm like, yeah, sure. Come meet me. I went to the same McDonald's. Yeah. I'm like, tell me about glass. Yeah. So when he ran the numbers to me and he told me how much he was making, I was blown away. I'm like, in a week? You can make how much? Let, so let, let me head. take a pause over there. Okay. Just I want to learn something. Why is this guy even willing to meet you to give you the numbers? Just a hard on him. I thank him till today because without him, there will not be car glass. Do, do you think it's really important to have people to understand That's networking that? there. Yes. You That's never know good. who you're going to be running to. Yeah. They can change your life. That's true. That's you know? true. That's true. This is some, yeah. it's a stranger. Yeah. But he's a willing stranger, to but he has your next opportunity. Right. Yeah. Right. So I met him, I tell him, tell me about glass. When he told me the numbers, I was like, what? You mean, I did my graduate, yeah. I did my undergraduate, yeah. I did my master's, yeah. and you can work for two days to make what I work, uh, make yeah. in two weeks? Mm. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. How can I do this? Because remember, I wanted to change time because I, I, I didn't want to trade more of my time mm. for money for an employer because mm. mm. I already had a moving company then. And I was still, I'm trying different stuff mm. by then. I'm like, I'm in Goldman Sachs. I'm miserable. I hate the corporate politics. <laughs> People are, want to get in, but yeah. I keep on telling them, you don't want this. <laughs> but they don't know because I'm in the inside. They're yeah. like, you just don't want me to work there. I'm like, no, you don't want this. Trust yeah. me. Because it was a lot of work and you go home and you, you answer you your emails. You leave for work. Yeah, you have a fob. You're answering emails from people in Germany, in Luxembourg, in Ireland, in Cayman. So you always, you know, and it's high go. stake. Mm. And one mistake costs somebody millions, yeah. you know. So... I was looking for another avenue. I'm like, I can do this. So I called Bernard and told him, hey, let me meet your brother. Mm. Can he do glass? I'm like, what is glass? I, I didn't even know what glass is. But 
I know somebody says he can teach me glass. glass. He can teach you glass because yeah. remember he cannot teach me because I'm working, right? Yeah. I'm employed. So I remember very well I was going to Japan and I asked my wife, thank her. She believed in me. She 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 believed in the drive that I have. I took her car and gave Felix. And I told yeah. Felix, Cuban has agreed to teach you glass. Yeah. You said you're bored staying at home, right? All he asks is every day at 8 a.m. be at the McDonald's. If yeah. you're there at 801, he's gone. So I ask Cuban, why do you guys always speed? Yeah. Because David, because of time. We only have eight hours of light during the day. If I start late, now I'm stuck in traffic with other people. I can yeah. only produce to the other Because I have a lot of jobs. Mm. So I have to move from one to the other. Remember, mm. the world is now transitioning from bringing your glass, mm. bringing your vehicle for glass to the shop to where it's a mobile service. So it's yeah. a mobile service. I'm coming to where you are. You are home. Your service. Now you just have to move to that place. Right. So... He's moving, so the quicker you do the job, the quicker you can beat traffic and the more mm. you can take home. Mm. So he told me, David, remember, I've taught a lot of people glass and it's not for everybody. So bring this brother of yours, you're saying, in two days, I'll let you know if it's for him or not. Or not. So you I remember I was, in, I was in Japan, I yeah. call him, how is it going? I'm like, David, as soon as you come back from Japan, buy the tools, he's ready. Yes. <laughs> and that's what I did. Nice. I came back, bought the first you truck. You took the action. Yes, I took the first step. I love that. Remember, I but love I still that. had employment. Yes. But you took action on you right. even investing in buying the I'd equipment. Seen the opportunity. Mm. Remember, it's a nurturing, it's, a, mm. it's an evolving thing because mm. I was looking at the world in a different way because I had a global. Not How global have you scaled so far the, the, this company, please? I've scaled because uh, right now I have Are you, so are much you selling uh, franchises? That, right? That's why I'm here, Brian. Yes. That's why I'm here. And no. you know me, I, I should be part of this. Please. Yes, you, you will. You will. After the first time, that's part of the things that we, we, need, to, we need to talk about, right? Yeah. Because our communities, we mm. need to get into some of these skill jobs. Because mm. mm. the reason why you're not in Uganda, I'm not mm. in Kenya right now, yeah. we came to look for opportunities. For opportunities. So why would you want to get it the harder way? Yes, yes. Whenever we can work together and harness, mm. you know? So long story short, he, I came back, I bought the first used truck, the first, every tool I bought was used. Yeah. And the business started becoming good. So I told my wife, hey, I want to do this full time. Yeah. I'm like, no, you know, this stability, you know, our, our spouses, they want stability, they want to count on tomorrow. I'm like, hey, Definitely. guess what? I'm still in the Navy. So if this does not work out. I have my other option. Now I can go to the Navy still. Yeah. But then what I hated the most was employment yeah. and corporate. Corporate. You wanted something. Because the numbers didn't make sense. Yeah. The numbers that were, they were me and Felix you, were you, doing. You, you get a check of 200,000 and you get home, it's 100. No. Or yeah. the other side, I'm working for myself. Mm. You can write off stuff. So you yeah. You know, if you're as an employer, own something the than government. Being yes, the, a gov paycheck. the government takes your money before you get it. As yeah. a business owner, you know. You see, for me, I'm a business owner, right. and I like uh, I also continue saying this. Like anyone I can employ, ask you like, even if you're still working for me and you give me the opportunity to work for me, create something. Even if it's like your hobby, but small. create something. Right. Even if it's small, and you continue. Encouraging and yourself a, and, yeah. and if it's a hobby, it's something you won't yeah. get bored of doing. Yeah, definitely. You're passionate. You can yeah. wake up in the morning and you're motivated, you're ready mm. to go. Definitely. Right? As we're closing, mm -hmm. what do you tell people who want to connect with you and who want to learn more from you? Uh, because for me, I have you close and I'm still learning more and more. And I would, I'll keep some secrets for myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to take this opportunity for him to share with you his contact, his, how you can link up with him. Because I want the world to receive you and do more f for our communities right yeah. so for shipping mm. it's shipping to eastafrica.com yeah. yeah or show us kenya freight show us mm. like you spend in french mm. car glass is car car with a you K see it down there K -R, see it down there yeah kr kr glass.com you mm. know my, my my direct number you know that when you call you're gonna you're gonna get my um my, my assistant she does a very good job what is that phone number uh 972-662-8289 that's for glass. And for shipping is uh, 972-215-8488. Where when you call any of those numbers, you find Helen. She is excellent. She she's I think she she makes it easy for she me. She'll make the magic happen. She makes she, she makes me look be good here and still stuff is going on. She That's she it. does an tremendous job. I really appreciate um uh, working with her. And um uh glass, I wanna say how I term it like glass is freedom. There's millions and millions of cars on the road any state you're in. Mm. Even Africa. Who does glass for the government? Who does glass? You know? Yeah. You know? So glass is one of those few 
hidden gems that people don't even think about. Like uh, for my car, I, I had a glass clock and it took me like almost like three to four weeks getting someone to, to come in. But guess what? If you, if you was for us, we come in the same day. Day. You know? So that's, that, that's our core competence. That's why some of the national companies, they cannot compete with us. Because do you we are do very glass limbo. doors or window shades? Everything. Everything. If he has wheels and he has glass, glass, we do it. Okay. From farm, you cut it there, farm equipment. Yeah, we can fabricate glass from farm equipment to, 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 to fleet vehicles, to sunroof, to quarter glass, to back glass. We do them all, right? Nice. And I've trained, so far I've trained nine people doing glass. Which states? In, just in Texas. Just in and Texas. And some of them have gone into... Start and now we're in Massachusetts. You know, Massachusetts. Tell you know? them we right. are here. So this year, I think yeah. I have very, very big plans. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. the franchise, I think uh, must, this is going to be our first yeah. franchise, right? Thank you. It's going to be our first franchise that we're going to be doing here in, in Massachusetts. And I've, I've been told New Hampshire, Rhode Island, mm. all these places are very close to here. Yeah. You know, going to be a Northeast kind of thing. And in Texas, we're growing. Nice. We're growing as well. Uh, we focus more on fleet, but okay. we also do all kind of glass. Mm. It's one of those skills that once you have, it doesn't matter where you go. You are. You and this skill, the AI yourself. will not take it. No. The AI will never change not, a glass for you. Not right now. Yeah. AI will never change a glass for you. Right. So, yes, yeah, that's, that's it. It's a big opportunity. I'll, I'll be training. You know, I'll be starting an academy mm. where I train people. Because it, the jobs in Massachusetts that mm. do, do not... You, somebody mm. in Ugandan or Kenyan community mm. doesn't do. Somebody else in other communities do, do it. it. Because the need is there. You look, yeah. how, how long did it take you to get service? Three weeks, right? Yeah, three weeks. To four Imagine weeks, yeah. if you needed it immediately and we do it the same day. That is it. That's, that's that, the nimbleness over there. And then, yeah. you know, the future of cars, the robo taxis, autonomous vehicles. Now, some of the features that used to be in only luxury vehicles like mm. Mercedes Benz and 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 and, uh, and BMWs. Mm. Now they're in regular cars. Regular cars. Regular yeah. cars, right? Because self-driving is the next, the future of cars is self-driving. So there's a lot of sensors. So we also do calibration. Yeah. Which is calibrating the camera so you can read the road and it does all the sensors for you, mm. right? Thank you so much, Davis. Uh, worry and uh, guys, you you have it here. Like, what more can I say? And Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. And for also, I want to take this opportunity to thank you, our viewers. If you have any message you want to share with us, reach out to us. And if you are recommending anyone you want us to invite here, please let us know. David Aor is here. And if you ask any co comments you want from him or you want to contact him, you'll be seeing the messages below. Uh, thank you. We love you all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.